We're going to move along now to the bear pit where Joan will talk with Stephen Patrick and the other bear pit denizens. You're vice president of a school in California, the School for Nonviolence. What do you think, or at least how do you think you're helping people not to be hit on a world scale by running a school of nonviolence? What are you trying to do there? The reason I started the school was that I was a sort of a typical do-gooder, and maybe I am, I still am, because I'm not very effective, but, but you have all sorts of good thoughts and good feelings, and you want to put them into effect, and it's all very nice, but if you don't know anything or don't know you know, have any new ideas, then you're useless. And so the school was to try to study. So we have, for one thing, have a real idea of what's going on in the world, because certainly in the United States, you can't find out from reading the newspapers, and you can't find out from the public schools or the universities. You have to go somewhere else. So we try to make available thing, literature and things that give you an idea of what's really going on, and then read books, Gandhi, Huxley, and things that give us ideas and alternatives to violence. Do you think that you've learned a great deal yourself from simply running the school or being around it? I don't know, but I'd like to comment on that. And once a, a disc jockey was interviewing me and he said, he was very nice, you know, and sympathetic, and he said, well, I hear you're running a school on nonviolence. You want people to stop being violent. That's great, but, you know, good luck. No, well, maybe that's true, because you probably are never going to be able to stop people from bopping each other over the head, you know, and getting mad on the spot and taking a swipe at somebody and, and you know, and getting boozed up and clobbering a buddy and all this stuff. But, but that's sort of incidental, one-to-one -one kind of violence. And, and that's completely different from the sticking pins in a map as to what village goes down the next day and, and, and organized violence. I mean, I think they're two different things. And we try, you know, to, if you get a little bit of insight into yourself and into the world and and your relationship to the other three billion people on the earth, maybe you'll stop being so silly all the time. Maybe you won't be so stupidly violent. But at the same time, we think it's more important to try to think of ways to, to act against organized violence, which is really going to, what's going to do us all in. You used to join marches, and you used to give your name to an awful lot more marches than you do now, and to movements. Your political actions are a lot more individual now. I got a little smarter. Do you think you were taken in by these people, or do you just think that they're wrong, the Berkeley protesters? Well, no, I think the, the revolution at Berkeley wasn't bad. It was, it was pretty good. It was a, what we call at our school, an unviolent revolution. I mean, they used nonviolent tactics most of the time, you know, but did some kind of dumb things. And I'm a stubborn, strict pacifist now, and I won't go along with things where I think there are going to be divisions of ideas. What do you think of draft dodgers? Is that a, an alternative to going to Vietnam that you... I think what I would wish, you know, would be that they would stay and fight. And, and for us, and for we pacifists, <laughs> all seven of us, yeah. um, <laughs> the most encouraging thing is when a young man says, no to Uncle Sam and, and we'll take the jail sentence and the ones who are our toughest group in the school we don't have a graduation and tests and all that but when they leave the school they go to jail you know we've got a goodly bunch of them now and we also have a lot of young men from Fort Ord which is an army base and about 10 miles away and they've found the school now and they a lot of them have come out for them it's even rougher because when they decide they're going to say no then they can get from three to five years of hard labor and they're willing to take it because all of a sudden they realize, wow, I'm my own person. I can say what I want. Sorry, old man, you know, you don't get my body, you don't get my mind, you don't get me. And I'll pick rocks for three years, but um, I'm, I've decided. You mean prepared yourself? Prepared to go to, go to jail. Sure. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what I'm going to do when I get to that door and they put me behind the bars. I may go into a dead faint. But yeah, I have to be ready to go to jail or I can't do the things I do. And even seeing you tonight, I have one question I'd really like to know. What, where you get that wonderful smile? <laughs> I got it from my mum. <laughs> Thank you. And Joan, yes. that's all the time we have. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Everybody.